Did you know you can actually sew on your embroidery machine? Well, in today's episode, I'm going to show you guys how you can sew a stuffed animal from scratch directly on your machine. All right, so I just want to remind you guys that before we get started, if you have any questions at all throughout the video, make sure to leave a comment and we'll get back to you with an answer. And I also wanted to say thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed so far. If you are new to our channel, welcome. If you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and click on the subscribe button below. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So for those of you who are not familiar with how this works, these are called in the hoop embroidery designs. And what they are is that they're designs made specifically for sewing inside of the embroidery hoop. So today what we're going to do is that we're just going to literally put together a stuffed animal from just a few pieces of fabric. So it's like if you were using your sewing machine, except you're going to do it on your embroidery machine. And there's a few techniques that we need to take in order to uh, take this creative approach on our machine. And you guys are gonna see just what we're gonna do today. All right, so I'm just gonna take a minute and go ahead and explain everything that we have going on here and how it's going to work into our final finished product of a stuffed animal. As you see here, I have a bunch of um, Halloween looking colors and can if you can guess what I am embroidering today it's going actually I'm not going to tell you guys I'm going to embroider it and then you guys will see it come to life so let's let's do that so this project is actually going to be completed in two hoopings the first thing you're going to do is you're going to hoop um, one piece of cutaway stabilizer to do the arms and the legs and then your next hooping you're going to hoop the um, cutaway stabilizer again and float your fabric, your different fabrics over to um, create the rest of the body. All right, so I have completed the embroidery of this section, reminding everybody that it's two pieces of fabric embroidered onto the cutaway. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, unhoop the material and then I'm going to cut out. So now taking my fabric scissors, I'm just going to go ahead and cut around the legs and the arms. And you're going to want to cut it with the cutaway. That's not going to be an issue. So now I'm just going to go ahead and cut closer to the stitching, but not the stitching, of course, because you don't want it to come out. And I'm leaving a little bit of space here because I'm going to go ahead now and turn this inside out. But first, before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest. Alright, so now I have my arms and my legs cut out. Now, if you turn it around, you can see that you can see the um, backing on the other side. So what we want to do now is actually turn it inside out. So you just make sure you're doing this carefully so that you don't rip any of the stitches. And then if you do, it's not a big deal. You can just sew it together. But try not to rip any of the stitches as that would defeat the purpose. All right, so here's what it should look like once you have turned it inside out. As you can see, there's no stitching required because you had those two pieces and you turned it inside out, so you have already the arms and the legs sewed. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue turning the rest of these inside out. And then you guys are going to see how the embroidery machine is going to stitch this onto the body in just a minute. Okay. All right, so now I have the four arms and legs cut out. Um, if a little accident like this happens to you and you end up um, tearing a little bit, then you can just go ahead and um, sew it together and that'll be fine. Just use the same color thread so that it doesn't pop out. I'm going to use black. It's kind of close enough, but it's what we got in hand right now. Um, and then I also wanted to go over um, this part right here. I wouldn't worry about trimming any of the excess fabric or stabilizer because we're going to actually stuff these and then put them on top. Um, you'll see how the process works. It's kind of hard to explain. I'd rather show you guys in just a minute. But basically, this part right here will be stitched on to the rest of the stuffed animal on the embroidery machine. So no need to um, worry about cleaning this up, but you can if you're like me and you're a little bit anal. So now I'm just going to go ahead and stuff all of the hands and the feet. So in this part, um, it's important not to overstuff because of the way that we're going to um, put it on the machine in order for it to be sewn onto the body. You don't want it to be too bulky because you want it to still get past the needles, and I'll explain that in just a minute. Um, just make sure not to overstuff it too much. Something like this, stuffing it just right, the way I'm stuffing it right here, that's enough. So you're going to want to stuff it first because the machine needs to sew it on. So of course, you don't want to um, have it sewn on without the stuffing yet. So you're, you're going to want to stuff it first. And then I also urge you guys to leave a little bit of space right here because the machine's going to sew right around here. So you want to leave a little bit of space so that the machine's not sewing over your batting. All right, so I already have all of the arms and legs stuffed, and now I have my next piece of cutaway hooped. Now, this is going to be the last part that we embroider, um, and most of the doll is going to be created here now. So actually, all of it is going to be created here now. So I'm going to show you guys exactly the step-by-step -step process on how we're going to stitch these on to the rest of the doll. But before we do that, let's stitch the doll. All right, so we're ready to go. I have one sheet of cutaway hooped, and then I have one sheet of batting float floating over the hoop. Um, next up, we're going to start the embroidery process, and I'm going to start off by um, marking my placement line for my first piece of fabric. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I'm going to offset my frame and now I'm ready to place my fabric over. All right, so this is gonna be the placement line for my next piece of fabric, and that's going to be a purple piece of fabric. So I don't know if you guys can see the screen right now, but as you can see, I'm gonna stitch a nice little Frankenstein stuffy. All right, so here's the placement line for the shirt. Now, it doesn't really matter what color it's stitched because it's, the fabric is going to be covering it. Um, but now I'm going to have to stitch it um, in the same color as the fabric. So my next color is going to be purple. So what's going to do is that it's going to stitch over, and then you're going to see what we're going to do in order um, to make the raw edges, to kind of seal the raw edges. So let's go ahead and press start so you guys can see. All right, so now what it did is that it stitched a line, and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to fold it over. And as you can see, that gives me a nice, clean edge to work with, rather than just stitching it on, you know, the edge and having it, you know, fraying out. So now I have my nice, clean edge to work with, and I'm ready to start the next step. So now that I have it folded over, it's just going to go ahead and stitch the rest of the shirt. Next up, we're going to stitch the placement line for the hair, and this one is going to be a little bit different in the sense that we don't have any folding over to do. This is going to be more like an applique process. So I'm going to go ahead and press start. All 
All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and offset my frame and just place my applique fabric right over. It doesn't really matter where you're gonna place it, place it because we're gonna cut it out as soon as it's done stitching. Um, and I'm just going to place it on this side instead because it's a little neater. All right, so I'm ready to press start. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and offset my frame so that I can cut it out and um, then restitch with the satin stitch to finish up the applique. So the good thing about this is that I can just bring it out instead of having to take the hoop out of the machine completely. I'd rather not do that just to avoid any registration issues. Um, so let's go ahead and just cut it in the hoop. All right, so I finished cutting around the edges. Now make sure, of course, not to cut the stitches and just leave just a tiny bit of fabric left. Um, and don't worry that it's not perfect because the satin stitch is going to fill that up. So I'm gonna just put my frame back to where it was and go ahead and press start. All right, so I have stitched a satin stitch around the hair and all the details on the face. You don't have to worry about any of this because you're gonna be turning it inside out and I'll show you um, what I mean in just a minute. Uh, but let's continue with the applique process. I'm going to lay down um, the white to stitch the collar, but let's start off with um, stitching the placement line. gonna place my fabric over and I'm going to repeat the same process that I did with the black fabric. So now I'm gonna offset my frame and cut out around the edges. All right, so now we have finished the applique and the stitching portion, so now I'm just gonna offset my frame. And this is gonna be the part where we stitch together the arms and the legs and then the rest of the Frankenstein. So I'm gonna start off with the two bolts, which are gonna be right here kind of in the ear area. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and um, stitch my placement stitch so I can know where to put these. So here I have my placement line for my bolts and I'm going to actually place them uh, with this part facing the center. And you wanna make sure that some of it um, goes across the seam as you see here. So this is gonna be where the seam is when we turn it inside out. So just make sure that you have enough to get stitched on. Now I'm gonna grab a piece of tape just to hold these down and make sure they're secure as the machine stitches. Make sure this tape is not touching the seam because this is where the machine is going to sew them on to the rest of the body. All right, so I have my two pieces of tape. Now I'm going to do a similar process with the arms and the legs. Next up, we're going to place our Frankenstein's arms. And this one doesn't have a placement stitch, so you can kind of just eyeball it and I'm just um, pushing the stuffing down because I want enough space for my machine to be able to embroider through here. So I would say the arms would be pretty good right about here. So what I'm going to do is of course tape them down as I did with the little bolts. And then just making sure that I'm not touching any of the stitches. And I'm gonna tape them on the other side as well. So just one thing to make sure is to make sure that your 
um, not the tape isn't touching the stitching area right here. So now I'm going to cross the other arm over and I'm just going to repeat. And now you're going to want to tape your arms down as much as possible because we're going to put this back inside the hoop. So you don't want that, you know, obstructing with the needle. So let's get it as flat as possible. All right, so now I'm going to place my legs and I'm going to do the same thing as I did with my arms and my bolts. So I'm just going to tape them. I know there's a lot going on here. This looks crazy. But believe me, it's a lot more simple than it seems when you get used to it. So now I'm just going to tape the legs down to make sure that it doesn't interfere with the embroidery machine. And I'm going to do a simple test. There's still one more step before we go ahead and start stitching. But I'm just going to do a simple test to make sure that this can fit through the machine without any issues. And you might want to hold it down a little bit as you bring the frame back in. Next up, we're going to grab our last piece of fabric, which is our purple fabric. And this is going to be the back of our machine embroidery stuffed animal. So assuming that everything has been placed correctly, the machine will now stitch this fabric together with everything we have stitched and the arms, the legs, and the bolts. So let's just place it over. You can tape it down if you want to. I'm going to tape it down just to be secure. You can use pins. So this is probably the most intimidating part because you don't get to see what's going on down there. But if you taped it correctly, then you shouldn't have any issues. All right, so now it's time to complete our final stitch to sew everything together. So let's, let's here it goes. All right, so the stitching portion is complete and our stuffed animal is laying in between these sheets. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out of the machine and then we're gonna cut it and stuff it and you guys are gonna see the final finished product. So let's go on over to the table. So when I did this final stitch, I just wanna remind you guys that I did slow down the machine just a bit because I didn't want it to go too fast and start moving things around down here. So I slowed it down and I also used my hands carefully. I don't recommend putting your hands under the machine, but I kind of used my hands to guide the fabric. Um, but of course, if you have pins, you're fine. So I don't recommend putting your hands under the machine. So I take that back. All right, so this looks like a crazy mess, but you're gonna see soon that we're gonna have a nice, beautiful stuffed animal or stuffed dolly, whatever you wanna call it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and um, remove the tape and remove the material from the hoop. All right, so now I'm just gonna cut around it. Make sure you're not cutting anything out. Now, of course, if you are cutting something out that's not supposed to be there, then regardless, you messed up and you have to bring it back to the machine. Um, but just cut around. Oh, this is fun. This is like unwrapping a present because you just don't know what you're going to get. You don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> okay, so now I have this like pillow looking type of thing. And in here, my Frankenstein awaits me. So you're going to use this opening to... I'm going to start by removing most of the tape. So you're going to use that opening to... Um, To help remove, to help um, get the Frankenstein out, and turn it inside out. Oh, and you were just seeing our little boy come to life. 
All right, so here is our Frankie, and um, the embroidery design is going to have an opening where you can go ahead and stuff it. And then this is the only part that you're going to need to either stitch with the machine or by hand. So I'm just going to go ahead and stuff it and then quickly stitch it by hand. All right guys, so this is the finished product and I'm so happy with how it looks. I just want to hug it and kiss it, but I'm not going to kiss it because that looks gone. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked this video, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button below and to subscribe to our channel. And I also wanted to take the time to invite you guys to our Facebook group, Embroidery and Custom Apparel Mastery. In there, you can chat with me and thousands of other embroiderers. You can share any tips or knowledge that you have, or you can ask any questions that you have as well. And last, before we go, I wanted to urge you guys to sign up for our newsletter. Um, you will get our content delivered to your inbox, so you definitely should sign up if you don't want to miss a thing. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next time. Bye.